This is Viterbi Voices. Coming to you from the University of Southern California, Viterbi School of Engineering. We're here to give you the inside scoop on research, classes, student life, and so much more. All of these shared by students, faculty, alumni, and other members of the USC community. Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Turby Voices. As usual, I am one of your hosts. My name is Paula Desma. I am the Executive Director of Undergraduate Admission here at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. Hello, everybody. I'm your other co-host, Maya Neuenschwander, a current junior at Viterbi studying Industrial and Systems Engineering. And Maya, it looks like we've got uh, another special guest here, a uh, mystery guest. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? So hi, everyone. I'm Sydney. Um, I'm a junior majoring in chemical engineering, and I'm originally from San Francisco. Very cool, Sydney. Thanks for being here. This is the first time. Is it the first time on the podcast? Yes. Yeah, yeah. First time. Well, welcome. Welcome to, to you. Um, and I appreciate you, you being on here. Uh, tell us a little bit about this episode that you've got for us here today. Yeah, so this podcast is basically about what life is like in chemical engineering. So I got three other chemical engineering majors um, to speak about their experience, about what their classes are like, what materials taught, uh, why they chose their major, how they got involved with research. And in addition to their involvements related to their major, they also talked about outside opportunities that they could pursue that's like not related to engineering if they wanted to pursue a minor. That is great. And and before we dive into this conversation about chemical engineering, which I think is a, is a really cool topic, because I think a lot of people need to understand what it is. Would you mind helping our audience understand you know, what what the heck is chemical engineering? I mean, if we th- if we keep in mind that a lot of our audience are, are high school students, maybe maybe they maybe they like chemistry. Maybe they're looking at it and they're thinking, what what's what's the leap from chemistry to chemical engineering? Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to add a lot here, Sydney. But uh, why did you choose it? What is it? Uh, what were you thinking in high school? Can, can you help uh, everybody understand what that is before we dive into the conversation a little bit more? Yeah. So basically, chemical engineers basically develop and design chemical properties or manufacturing. So like you have like fluids or you have a reactor and then you have different like uh, different liquids or different chemicals pretty much. And you just have to figure out like what happens to them and how much of like X component do you have? Um, I will say going in to this major, I thought it was a lot of chemistry, but it is not a lot of chemistry. You do take chemistry classes. However, it's also like very calculus based and physics based. Um, but there is there the fundamentals of chemistry are involved. Um, as for why I chose chemical engineering, um, because in high school, I had like an interest in chemistry. I wasn't that great at it, I will be quite honest, but I had an interest in it. Um, and I also really liked like building things, problem solving, innovating. So I was like, okay, engineering. So I was like, why not put the two together and see how it works out? Um, and so far, it's working out. Um, but yeah, you can go into so many different uh, fields with engineering or chemical engineering. You could go into like medicine, petroleum. Um, I'm going to try to go into cosmetics. You can go into food science. Very cool. I mean, you say it's not a lot of chemistry, but you do take a lot of chemistry classes. I mean, especially compared to other engineering majors. I mean, you're taking like five chemistry classes throughout your entire time. So it's, yeah, it's all- no, it, it there there are you take all the way up to like physical chemistry and past OCHEM. So there is a lot. You still have to take a lot of chemistry class classes. It's just. The, the idea of engineering chemical engineering isn't itself. necessarily yeah, chemistry, right? Involve yeah, the got it. Yeah. I just want to be clear. When you said that, I was like, not a lot of chemistry. I'm like, hold on. You have more chemistry than any other engineering major. <laughs> I think the only other person on campus that takes more chemistry classes are chemistry majors. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I guess for you, I understand what you're getting at, which is in the idea of the engineering courses and the application, which is very, very cool. Well, let's get out of the way and hand it right back over to you, Sydney, to have this conversation about life of chemical engineering students. everyone and welcome back to the Viterbi Students Podcast. My name is Sydney Fiorentino and today I will be hosting a Chemical Engineering Roundtable Podcast. I'm a junior studying chemical engineering with an emphasis in nanotechnology. I'm originally from San Francisco and today we have three chemical engineers here with us, two of which are juniors and one of which is a senior. Can you guys introduce yourself? 
Um, yeah, I'm Carl. I'm a junior studying chemi. Um, I don't have an emphasis, but I do have a strong interest in material science. So I guess that's a, that's a thing. Um, hi, I'm Monasi. I'm a junior chemi biochem emphasis. I have an English minor and I'm from San Diego. Um, hello, uh, my name is Hari. I'm a senior studying chemi, as we all are. Um, I'm from the suburbs of Chicago, um, and I have a minor in musical studies, uh, classical saxophone performance. Nice. So now that you have met everyone, we are going to dive into questions just before we get started. For everyone listening, chemi has six different emphases, uh, biochemical, environmental, petroleum, polymers and materials, and sustainability. So on to the questions. Can each of you explain why you chose USC for chemical engineering and why chemical engineering? There are a bunch of different schools that are also good in this major, so why USC? Um, my situation was a little weird because um, I kind of just looked through a list of all of the majors and saw chemi and thought, hey, that looks pretty sick. So, um, <laughs> um so yeah, I mean, I ended up just sticking with it because I thought it was awesome um, and, and it's a pretty fun major. So um, yeah, I'd say that's why I chose Chemi. Why did I choose USC? Well, probably because it was the best school that I got into. I mean, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a top 20 engineering school and they, they, they prove it time and time again. So uh, yeah. Okay, nice. I Honestly, what about you? I don't have a great chemi answer either. It's just, I really don't want to go to grad school. So engineering and I suck at physics. So chemistry, I straight up went through the catalog and made sure that this one was the one with the least physics. I was wrong. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, I picked USC partly because I just wanted to stay in SoCal. Like I, I don't want to go anywhere else. I would do very badly in the cold, I think under 70 is cold so but yeah uh usc being private was really good for me just because they talk a lot about how you could do a minor and like an engineering major at the same time because it was such a small private school and then also the classes were pretty small so yeah i think uh modestly encapsulated what a lot of us chemical engineers are feeling right now being like i don't want to say like deceived by what the major provides us but like caught a little bit off guard with like the sort of content that we'd, we'd be getting into. Like I was in a similar boat. I like enjoyed chemistry a lot in high school. And I thought like, okay, yeah, I like the logical thinking of engineering. It seems like those are gonna match up. And then I showed up and I was completely wrong. Uh, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy the major. I don't enjoy some of the classes I've been taken or like the people I've met, because it still gives me opportunities to apply that logical thinking that I really enjoyed about engineering. Um, but as Monazi said, there is like a little bit more physics behind it. You worry, you worry about, um, like developing processes, optimizing processes. So there is a lot of that um, intrinsic uh, logical thinking required in the classes, which is like a touch of chemistry on how we can optimize a specific reaction to get the uh, results that we want or how we can worry about how we can minimize like heat loss and things like that. Um, all stuff that you learn in chemistry, but it's like applied in a, in a much more practical setting in a sense. Um, that being said, as for USC, again, I also have a strange situation. I understand that everyone will have their own like pros and cons about schools. My sister goes here, so it was nice having her close, um, despite my the rest of my family being far away, like in the Midwest. Um, but for as the school itself, like again, like USC has very strong engineering across the board, um, and chemical engineering is no different. Uh, one of the appeals of chemical engineering here um, is that the classes are small. You're graduating classes, maybe like 30 ish, 40 people. 40 yes, around 40, <laughs> around 40 people, uh, which is which is nice because like by the end of your like sophomore or junior year, you're like already tight with everyone who you're going to be walking at graduation with. Um, so it does develop that small sense of community. And like, yes, the school itself has a lot of people, but like us little chemies in our own graduating class have grown close over the years. Yeah. Hari, how big is your senior class? My senior class was... 950 people or something like that like oh wait i thought you're talking about high school no no oh my god okay, engineering okay. engineering i think it's like 40 i think my senior class is like 40 people you guys are bigger than us than we were we have, we have like 36 now uh we have 36 <laughs> i definitely agree at least we know most of them yeah <laughs> i swear i thought you're talking about high school <laughs> you're all right do you like physics Yes, I do. I do like physics. So I like that was a pleasant surprise for me coming in. Or like I didn't realize that I liked physics, but then I found it here. And then again, it's something for everyone. Yeah. yeah.
And then, Hari, I know you touched on it, but what would you guys say you learned in your chemical engineering courses? Could you describe some of the specific courses and how they're taught and how hard the classes are? Yeah, so um, I'll definitely start by saying chemi is hard. Um, yeah. It's it's yeah. it's not a joke. You do need to be coming into chemi with some grit. Um, but yeah, no, they are super cool. You learn a lot about... Uh, I guess like fluids and uh, like pretty much all of chemi is going to be about something to do with fluids. Um, but you're going to do everything from thermodynamics, like the study of how heat moves or just like how the fluids themselves interact um, down to like the chemistry. So, so pretty much from a molecular up to a bulk scale. Um, my favorite right now is physical chemistry. Yeah, I yeah. think. Um, and also you can uh, agree with that, but um yeah, so we have some really great professors, uh, and I guess with most of the chemi majors who came in here thinking this was a chemistry major, a lot of us really like our chem classes. <laughs> this is accurate. I don't really have that much more to say because we're in the same classes for the most part. Yeah. It's the overarching like structure of the major is it throughout your freshman through, I'd say first semester of senior year, you're learning all like the bits and pieces, the puzzle pieces to put together your final project of your second semester of your senior year, um, being simulating some sort of chemical process. So like your sophomore year, you learn about distillation columns and other sorts of separating, separating mechanisms that you're going to be using in that final project. Or your junior year, you're learning about like mass transfer principles that are going to be used in that final project. So it is about like or the major structured in a way where you're learning all the things you need along the way to be a successful chemical engineer. Um, and it sets it up really nicely where you can apply it in like a meaningful setting for like a process oriented project by the end. Um, I'm sort of looking forward to it coming January uh, when I start my second semester. Um, but uh, I guess that's how the major works as like a function. It, the classes are hard as they said before, but like in the end there is a good payoff. Mm -hmm. And good pay. Yeah. 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 And um, do you guys have any tips for anyone who do who for anyone who does want to go into a chemical engineering degree, like how to structure your course load, how to like manage your time, how much, how long does homework take you? Um, for me, I'd say like the biggest piece of advice that I would give is like you want to find a, a group that uh, I guess thinks similar to you or is in a similar situation. Um, like for me, I found like a. a great group of like a lot of engineers who are kind of in the, like in the same boat as me that I can ma mainly treat as like a social club. Um, so that became like really important because especially once you're like a junior or senior uh, school does end up stressing you out quite a bit. Um, so having like some uh, having people that um, are in the same boat, but that you can really stress just hanging out with um, is definitely a huge plus and I, I don't know what I would do without that resource. I kind of agree with the, the people thing because a lot of it like, it doesn't seem like it, but a lot of it is whether or not you like the people in your major. So if you already have a group of people, you, you just find people to do work with and you stick with them throughout the years. It's really nice knowing that you're not the only one struggling because we're all just kind of dying together. But I don't know, it's nice having that sense of community because it makes everything a lot easier going onwards. And also for me, Google Calendar. Google Calendar is the best thing in my life right now. It's amazing. <laughs> Amen. It's Amen. The reason I get to class on time. It's the reason I remember to do my homework. It's the reason I have to pick my roommate cough drops right now. <laughs> but I'll just move that <laughs> time it was. Uh, otherwise, I think doing something outside of chemi is also really important, I think just because you need to be able to just disentangle yourself with what is 99% of your life and have some corner of your life that is not related to that, that you can have a different mindset in to some degree. I wouldn't say Kenny's 99% of our okay, life. fine, um, fine. But like, yeah, the, the, no, the thing that we are here for, like we're seeking our degree for, it's okay, if, like we want that to not be and the dominating figure of our engineers. life. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but I do think, <laughs> I do think that community uh, aspect is necessary, if not beneficial, even within like um, the people in your major uh, itself, because I did mention like I've, I've grown close to the senior graduating class um, after this many years taking classes together. So now we've like, we help each other with homework, we troubleshoot problems in our code together, we figure out solutions. Like I was just hanging out in office hours um, for, a for like the senior design class yesterday, um, was it yesterday? No, two days ago. Um, and then like, 
a couple of just just stayed after they weren't people I necessarily hung out with like outside of school um but like we were all working on each other's simulations together to make sure all of us could end up getting the correct answer or like feeling confident in our homework submission by the end of the week all of us are just an RTH yeah yep nice yeah it's definitely like working in groups and forming study groups um as for extracurriculars um are there ways for you to apply your knowledge from class to your extracurricular extracurriculars and what extracurricular activities are you involved in um i mean me personally aside from a uh, research and internship experience i've tried not to be as academic with my extracurriculars just because you know so much of your life already is academic um, so I'm, I'm in two clubs that are both, I guess, primarily social, at least that's the way it seems. Um, one is, uh, Theta Tau, which is the, uh, Professional Engineering Society, and the other is, um, AKI, or the American Institute of Chemical Engineers, um, which Manasvi and Hari are also on eBoard with me. Um, so yeah, I'd say that that's like the main thing that, um, I put a lot of my time into. Um, but those for me are usually just ways to build leadership experience and hang out with my friends. Yeah, outside of research and internship stuff for me too. Um, it's mostly just achy for like official extracurriculars. Professional stuff takes a lot of time. Achy is a good time. But other than that, I don't really have like school extracurriculars necessarily because everything else that I'm doing outside of that is personal like as in like if I'm doing like English related stuff or writing related stuff I don't really do it through the school or any of that like I count it as an extracurricular because of how much time it takes up yeah. but that's something I do on my own or like with a separate group of friends that is completely outside of all of this. Um, I can certainly think that the most applicable um, uh, situation for the stuff I've learned has been like my research experiences um the research i do is related to like material science stuff and i've taken a handful of material science classes at my time here so far um material science being one of the most closely related disciplines to chemical engineering um and i have found opportunities to like think about fluid dynamics or uh mass transfer heat transfer things like that classes that i took my junior year and the stuff that i'm doing in lab this year um but then again i do have my like um, other extraneous extracurriculars like Aki, um, as Monsfi and Carl also both mentioned a second ago. Um, I also play for the club Frisbee team here. Um, that's really good for me as like an outlet because as soon as I show up to practice like all of my other school responsibilities, I don't have to think about them because there's nothing I can do for the next two and a half hours. Um, that being said, like as soon as I step off the field for practice, it's like, oh, well, now I have to think about all that again. But those two and a half hours were lovely and amazing while, while I had the chance. And it does give me like a nice physical outlet to like express any frustrations that I have about our major um, or just about things in general. Well, for things, sure. Yeah, school can be hard. School can be hard. Deadlines can be approaching. But like having outlets to not worry about that or having outlets that I completely... To relieve uh, your stress. Yeah, to yeah. relieve my stress or completely compartmentalize like anything that I have going on in my head. Um, in terms of like research expectations or curricular expectations, um, having like a, like a, that is like a social outlet for me too. Um, and Carl mentioned the importance of having that social outlet. Um, I find that extremely valuable um, from an extracurricular perspective. So I know you mentioned research. Can you explain a little bit about your research and then Monospe, you also do research? Um, yeah. Kind of, yes. I'm moving away from that because I'm doing more internship stuff this year because my internship is like kind of extended from the school year. So that's more of what I'm doing right now. My research stuff was last year. Okay. Well, can everyone just explain a little bit more about their research, how they got the position, what it's like, how they apply the knowledge from school? Mm -hmm. um, USC is very supportive, especially Viterbi, of giving undergrads research opportunities. And I know that's um, especially or like compared to like other California schools, USC is uh, especially good about it um, because they do offer like a handful of different programs, fellowships, scholarships that promote undergraduate research. Um, Sydney, you and I both uh, were part of the CURVE program uh, last year, which does like pair students up with individual labs. I don't know if Carl, honestly, were you CURVE students? Yeah, I did in my freshman year. Oh, okay, Carl was a CURVE student uh, or a CURVE fellow. And then they pair us up with like uh, private investigators, sorry, principal, principal investigators, <laughs> not private investigators, <laughs> principal investigators, or like professors of labs. Um, and you've then- You've been getting up too, hurry. <laughs> I'm gonna go there. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so they pair you up with like the PI of a lab and then they give, you work on a project with some of their grad students and then it is funded by the school. Like you do get like a, a nice stipend for the hours that you're expected to work during the week. Um, if you choose not to pursue that route or if you have some sort of external funding uh, source, um, I know Viterbi offers some fellowships on their own for incoming freshmen. Um, sometimes it's as simple as emailing a professor who you're interested in their research, asking if they have any openings. And more often than not, the professors will um, either give you a polite response, no, or they'll be enthusiastic about a freshman who's interested in research. Um, and then they'll get you on board um, as simple as that. Is that how you? I mean, me? I just straight up cold emailed professors after freshman year. And I remember I got like an email from Graham uh, at the end of like April ish going like, oh, we don't have like funding for spots, but check back in with me when the year starts. And I emailed him again at like end of July. And he was like, yeah, okay, let's do like a 20 minute like interview and we'll see how it works. And it, yeah. And then I was working that lab for the whole year. There's also a professor of ours. Carl, you also did Curve? Uh, yeah, I did Curve um, my freshman and into my sophomore year. Um, so yeah, I worked in uh, Balakrishna Lab, which is, I think I was one of two undergrads. I was like the first undergrad to join that lab. Um, and we worked on basically battery materials and, and interfaces like within the materials. Um, at that point, since I had only taken, or I was, I joined the lab like right as I began my first chemistry class. I really didn't know what I was doing per se, um, but it's actually, uh, it was actually some great experience because now that I'm taking my first material science class, I'm actually kind of amazed that I know pretty much everything that's taught, yeah, there it is. There um, it is. which is, which is really cool how like everything starts overlapping once you uh, get a good foundation. Yeah. Side note, but did you, you emailed Dr. Imani? To mm -mm, I took her class. I took 350, mass 350 with her. And at the end of the semester, she um, emailed me and was like, I heard you're interested in research. Please apply to my lab. Yeah, you did like the actual application. I did the actual through, application. Like, the thing, um, yeah. And then I got her funding later. Yeah. yeah. So the thing you said about like knowing what you're doing in class with the lab, that's actually super relatable because I'm taking bio class right now. And half that stuff is the stuff that like I got explained to me in the beginning of my lab work. So it's really nice. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to understand that stuff when you see it happening in front of you in the research setting. Like I was lost for the first um, many months that I was there, but like just like being in the presence of it for so long rather than having it lectured at you yeah. three times a week for an hour. <laughs> like I was working with other undergrads, so they knew what it was like to not understand something. So they explained it to me in like very small words. Yeah, there it is. Helped a lot. Mm -hmm. And to go back to extracurriculars, I know Hari, you mentioned Frisbee, which helps you de-stress. Um, but how do you guys balance extracurriculars? Do you have time to like unwind from school? Uh, yeah, um, I can I can touch on this first because you name dropped me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I touched on Frisbee a little bit and uh, why why I value it for so long and I've competed on the team for um, since I was a freshman and the good it's done for me. In terms of balancing extracurriculars, I would approach this question just more for more like a time management because like yeah balancing extracurriculars is just like how well can you manage your time and I wasn't good at it freshman year um because it was awfully convenient living on campus to be able to go back to my dorms and take naps in the middle of the day come my junior year when I realized that that's no longer a sustainable lifestyle um I would often spend my time like if I have like two or three hours during the day USC has tons of great studying spots in almost every building on campus I just go pull up a chair, find a table somewhere and just like get some work done. A lot of times it would end up being outside because the weather's here or the weather here is nice entirely year round. Um, so then I would be working like or I'd be on campus doing things, not necessarily school things, but like doing things for like the extent of a normal work day or like a high school school day. Um, but that would allow me to be much more um, productive and use my time in a more meaningful manner. Or rather than going home and going to the dining hall an extra five, five times um, over the course of the week or something like that. Um, not to say the unlimited meal plan of the dining hall is great. It's it's phenomenal. Take advantage of that while you can. But didn't have that because we were online for the first year. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I love my unlimited plan. Uh, I go into the dining hall five times a day and just like get a bowl of cereal. I like that or, like, do you have like a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch? Okay. Or like some fried fried cinnamon toast crunch. Or if you have the if you already are paying for the meal plan, you can I guess take totally. advantage of the fact that it's there for <laughs> you, you know? Kitchen. Well, because like freshman year, didn't you have to get the meal plan? Yeah. yeah. No, well I they didn't because they did well, yeah. I had to get the meal yeah. plan my, my freshman year. My mother telling me to eat lunch. 
Nice, yeah, yeah same. Yeah, right? Um, right. Yeah, I would definitely uh, want to say, like, sometimes your schedule just kind of balances itself. Um, like, a lot of the a lot of the events that I go to are like required for my clubs or at least like fulfill some kind of requirement. Um, so you kind of just learn to schedule around them and then you end up hanging out with your friends because you're forced to hang out with your friends, um, which is pretty cool. But I, I can't say I'm the best with time management just because I'm such a sweat. But <laughs> oh, you're real good at time management. I don't know what you, you do. You do your homework when you get it. <laughs> yeah, that was the first <laughs> person to place every assignment. I actually turned in a project today um, for senior design, and it was the earliest I've ever turned in a project. Oh my God. Because instead of being like within an hour of the deadline, it was six hours before the deadline. Isn't that exciting? I did it. This is progress. Yeah. <laughs> this is progress. I did a PCAM assignment, and I finished it before the weekend, and it's due Monday. Oh, no way. Go oh, on. I know. I'm so surprised. <laughs> So for monastery and high, so I know both of you mentioned you have a minor. So how do you balance your minor classes and how many clubs, um, like, do you join any clubs related to that minor? And how do you know when to allot time for that minor interest when you have a busy major? I mean, for me, like, this kind of pairs the last question, too. I kind of use my minor classes to unwind because I like reading, I like writing, and it's a really good break from doing math and science. So, like, Straight up two hours ago, I was reading Shakespeare on the balcony at RTH because <laughs> I needed a break. It's just, it's nice for me. I just sit outside and I do my readings for my classes. It's, yeah, it's a good, it's a different experience. And it's really nice to be able to do something that is just so diametrically opposed to what I'm doing in any of my other classes. Like I took a contemporary poetry class last year about the grotesque. And there's no way anyone else in our major must do anything like that. I was just sitting there reading poems about murder going like, you know what, it's a really nice sunny day. I mean, to each their own, but I would not imagine reading Shakespeare as a break it's in the funny. middle of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Every Shakespeare book I've read has been like shoved down my throat in high school English classes yeah, and I have not enjoyed a single time. On. Okay, yeah. Take well, a class where you get to enjoy it. I, well, like when, I, when there's a deadline associated with it, I don't think I will be enjoying reading any sort of Shakespeare. It's a good time. I like watching the plays when I read it. Okay, it those those are fun. The plays are fun to watch. Um, yeah. But um, I'll speak on my minor. Uh, it's a little bit, my minor is structured in a way, it's a uh, classical saxophone, um, in a way that it's quite easy to fit into a schedule. Um, because like with any sort of music minor related thing, you're going to have to take some sort of private lessons in a capacity. Um, and those are just like a bunch of one unit classes that can be spread over your entire undergraduate career, as opposed to maybe some other minors where you need to dedicate blocks for three unit classes, four unit classes, and it might be a little bit harder to fit those in. Um, I got lucky in high school to have a lots of AP, uh, AP classes offered, which got me out of like a couple intro levels of math and chemistry um, to give me a little bit more room for that. Um, but just generally, I think it is feasible to, if you really are passionate about some sort of a uh, minor, some sort of uh, extraneous interest that's uh, could be aligned with chemi, could be far from chemi, as Monaspi and I just talked about. Um, I would pursue it. It does serve as a nice break. It gives me an opportunity to not think about math and science um, or Shakespeare for that matter, because I don't want to think about that. Uh, <laughs> but again, to, to, to each their own, to each their own. Um, but that, that's my take on that. It's subject. also really good on a resume. I think every interview I've ever had has asked me about my English minor. Because nice. companies want like people too. Yeah, they want they people just... who like have done something outside of just this. Nothing against you, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm on the just like, and I just went back and forth, and I realized that you were saying that like, oh damn, we're just. We're just it's like you have to have a minor. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. <laughs> way better than <laughs> Carl is phenomenal. We love Carl. <laughs> I just wanted to be an English major, and instead, I chose money. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Like, I wanted to minor in something journalism related, but it was too many credits. I think it was like eighteen to twenty credits. And but I just, you still do some stuff with that. Yeah, yeah, I still like do some stuff in Annenberg, and uh, I'm a part of a bunch of clubs that are related to like journalism and writing too. I would say, like, even if you know you can't finish the minor, declare it anyway, so you can get access to the higher level classes. Because mm -hmm. most of the good ones that you want to take are declarance classes, and you need to have the minor declared before you can take any of them. 
or just access to like some buildings some facilities yeah, like you need a music minor room. yeah if you need a music minor to get in the practice room so if you want to just declare it and then <laughs> just at the end, like at the, end of your, <laughs> at the end of your senior year uh, yeah. just like drop the minor like that's entirely your own decision because like you can just be like oops i didn't have the capacity to finish it but then you get access to the practice rooms. It's my sister actually did a very similar thing she would pretended to not pretending she <laughs> declared herself as a double major um in like health promotion and spanish um to qualify her to do a maymester in peru um but she knew the entire time that she did not have the like the space to finish her spanish major um because she was pre-med uh so she ended up like moving it down to a minor but like she still got to go to peru in the month of may so yeah like you can do these things like people do these things that's how it works it's not like we're cheating the system in any way also it's like really hard to finish a minor if you're chemi the only reason i can do my because i'm also doing co so my ge's are different the only way I can finish mine is by taking two classes over the summer and just like, I think I'm taking a 20 unit semester in my senior spring, but it's like, oh, yeah. senior okay. spring. Look, look, it is an advanced poetry class that I really want to take and it's, it's only poetry. for spring. She loves poetry. Yeah, it's poetry. It's not hard. For 20 units in your last it's semester. It's one year. class a week for like three hours and I just go and I get critiqued and Maybe I'll feel really Sounds bad about awesome, myself yeah. after. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. Break. Last semester of school, I just want to show up and get my uh, work roasted <laughs> the entire time. That sounds like a great use of three hours a week. <laughs> I don't know okay. what you're talking about. Worth it because you get paid for published stuff. <laughs> this is you can get paid for those three doing other things. You're I'm also getting paid. For that. <laughs> no, yeah, but it's. The only reason that I can finish my stuff is because I super planned it out from the beginning with like Excel schedule everything <laughs> from the very, very beginning. And it's still going to be hard to get everything I want in there. So. Can you explain what TO is? Oh, uh, it's thematic option. Um, not a lot of, I, actually, I've met a few I know a people. Of yeah, yeah, I know yeah. like a handful of maturity people who do it. But I don't know anyone else in Kemi. I know like Mandy wanted to do TO, yeah, but she couldn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, it's like a program that you can take your, you sign or you apply for you your freshman year? apply for it, yeah, but it's, I think they accept most people. It's a humanities based GE program. So instead of taking the GEs that you're taking, like GEV or whatever, right? You take TO classes, core classes, they're more humanities based in that you're doing a lot of reading and writing. And Not for like, me. Oh my God. I was looking through my old like core 101 stuff or 102 <laughs> stuff the other day and I wrote a banger Frankenstein essay, okay? It was good. <laughs> and I, it was titled, In Which Men Think That the Whole World Is Still About Them. <laughs> The first okay, line was like, solid. it is very hard to not hate Victor Frankenstein. It was a very good essay. I will say that. But it's just reading and writing based entirely. And you're in like smaller classes. So instead of taking Grit 150, I took Core 102 with about like 20, 30 people. And like, it's really easy to become close friends with people. I really liked it for that reason. Because I'm like my roommate I met in TO. And I've been living with her for like two years now. Uh, she's great. Uh, but I don't know. A lot of a lot of people call it traumatic option because of the amount of reading and writing. But if you genuinely like that stuff and you can't pursue like an English minor because you can't fit in your schedule, I would recommend taking CO because like it really just is what you make of it. I like being able to take those classes with a completely different outlook on whatever you're looking at. Yeah, nice. So let's go talk about the USC environment. So what is what, what would, how would you describe the USC community and chemical engineering community? I love it. I mean, like the yeah. people sitting in this room right now chatting are my chemical engineering friends. Um, and we've met each other through like the organizations that we have here and the involvement that we have. And that means we see each other at all the events that like AQ puts on throughout the year, um, which is, as Carl said, it's an excuse to just like hang out with your friends in an event that you're like pseudo required to be at. Um, so I do get that sense of support and that sense of community from the chemical engineers here, just again, because like there are so few of us where it's easy for us to bond over our shared experiences and our shared difficulties and, and whatever we have going on. Yeah. I like that we're friends because then AQ board meetings are super fun. Yeah, you definitely, it's very easy to become friends with people that you join clubs for. I'd say that like a lot of people definitely join clubs just to like have a community, which is totally viable. I mean, I did it. Um, I'd say like in general, the USC community is 
pretty awesome. Um, I mean, it's it's super easy to make friends here, like no matter, I guess, like your differences. Um, so like like yesterday, um, like I met I met two random people and like became friends with them and, and probably hang out with them at some point this weekend. Like it's it's really easy to um, make make friends with like people who um, maybe in like your hometown you wouldn't have been able to uh, become friends with um, and like learn new perspectives, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, I definitely say that it's a very it's a very like inclusive and fun uh, community here at USC, um, and that's definitely one of like the major pros to coming here. Honestly, if you just like ask people, don't go places with you. Like it's such a small thing to say, but like it's really easy to make friends if you just go like, "Hey, do you want to work outside with me for the next two hours?" You know, like yeah. I, I made a friend in one of my classes by literally just going, "Hey, I'm walking this way. You want to walk with me?" And now we just kind of sit there for the hour in between my classes, like getting food together. It's hot. Yeah. I agree. USC is a very social school. Like once someone was talking to me at the corner of, I think it was Jefferson, and then they just like started a conversation and then we just talked. Everyone's pretty social. Um, so if you had the chance to be a freshman again, what would you do differently? Or would you do anything differently? And would you join a different club, join a different research lab? What did or do you want to do? Um, I would probably join a design team um because uh the design teams here are just absolutely awesome um, i'm trying to get more involved with the formula car team now um but i wish i had done that a little bit earlier um there's also like a bunch of other things like chemi car uh or or solar car, solar car rpl um aero design yeah there's Which there's so many i you we could keep listing them um so yeah i'd say that my big one would probably be uh joining a design team I think we're online, so, you know, I'd like to be in person. <laughs> yes, yes. But I think, like, I think, I don't know, I probably would have joined more clubs, too. You kind of realize that you don't have time for most of that stuff, and it dwindles over time, but it's nice having the friends that you make in them at first, and, like, even if you're not in the same club anymore, you can still be friends with them before, and, or at least just, like, not even, like, school stuff. I would have done more stuff in the city, because I realized... Like, now that some of my roommates have a car, I just really didn't go anywhere last year. And yeah, we had, like, COVID going on, but there were so many things that I could have gone to over the weekend that I just, like, kind of didn't manage my time well enough to have time to go to. And also, like, we get free access to, like, the National History Museum and the Science Museum, and no one never really goes. Or, like, there's so many things you could do that's, like, five minutes away from campus that you just don't think of doing because you don't have the time to. And I really wish I'd done more of that stuff yeah. Yeah. yeah and the museums are really close i didn't know we got free access so i paid for it to get, <laughs> I think oh residents get free access to most museums too like stuff like lacma i think it's like there's it some tuesday tickets for sure yeah you oh, can yeah, get free cheap, you can get free entry uh, if you're an la county resident yeah well i would echo what monas said like i just wish i did more things um and just like exploring the city. I know, I just don't know the public transport around here. Like the Metro is very useful to be able to just like go to the beach or go to Grand Central Market or something like that. And I just wish I had the initiative to do more of that and kind of went outside my own level of comfort of my my <laughs> twin bed, my twin XL bed in my dorm. Yeah. Cause like that was like in the moment that felt like a great way to spend my weekend mornings. But like now looking back, I have a semester and a half of college left and there's not a lot of time to do all the things that I wish I did while I'm in LA and I don't have much time left in LA um so that'd be the thing that I addressed um honestly if I had a sophomore year I would probably have filled my sophomore year with some of those things if I had a sophomore year on campus but um I guess that's something that we've all dealt with over this past uh past few years so I can't like blame myself too much for that uh, but now I just wish like I went to LACMA for the first time last year and it was beautiful it was phenomenal I had such a good time um they have the they have the do you see the little train thing that they have the yes, train set up yes, that was one of the so coolest cool. things i ever There's saw like a thousand like hot wheels cars yeah they have this the whole city. they have this huge setup of like bricks and blocks and like toys and a bunch of train tracks and railroads and like car roads it's and like so cool. interconnected they run the whole yeah, thing okay. and it's like it's so cool there's so many things yeah some people go to lacma for the actual art not me i go to watch that the model train yeah oh, you're right the model that trains are art. Art. yeah okay fair enough Wait, yeah. what is LACMA, the Ottoman? Uh, LACMA. Museum of Art. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was the Ottoman Museum. 
Uh, I've been to the Automobile Museum. Yeah, it's okay. cool. It's where that one iconic photo that everyone takes with all like the super tall white pillars, the light. Yeah. The oh, light. With the, 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 the lamp, lamp, lamp sunlight. Yeah. 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 So overall, there's a lot of things to do around <laughs> USC, and especially in LA. If it wasn't clear already. No, but Drunk. no, a lot of last last year, um, I went out a lot. So I went to like WeHo um, and like the beach a lot and everything. What are you laughing at? Continue. I'm just gonna edit that part out. <laughs> And with that, that's the end of the roundtable. I would like to thank you all for coming in and chatting with me about chemical engineering. So thank you, Monasby, Carl, and Hari. Glad Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. All right. Hello. Welcome back, everybody. And Sydney, I just want to thank you for bringing us this great conversation. Um, it really reminded me of the biomedical engineering conversation that we released pretty recently. Um, really cool to highlight the major, the different personalities, and just see a group of people who are really close within that major, um, to see them interact conversationally. It was really cool. Yeah, I listened to the biomedical and Bobo one, and I was going to try to get actually Taco Bell from um, <laughs> Chemical Engineers, but the they didn't like my order didn't go through, which was pretty sad. But we still had a great conversation in the end. Well, was it was it going to be chemical engineering and Taco Bell, or was it going to have the alliteration? Were you going for chemical engineering and like I don't know <laughs> what's the what's the k sound or like is it cheese nachos? Like what what were you going for there? I was actually not going for food, but it was going to be kind of like a feast while we were talking. Got it. <laughs> yeah, Sydney was craving Taco Bell. Oh, I was. I placed that order. It went through. I did not get a refund. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, is there anything that you would want a current high school student to know uh, or the one thing you want them to take away about chemical engineering before we kind of wrap this whole thing up uh, in summary of you know what it is and what students do here? Maybe questions that they might have or questions that you have that aren't answered. I would say even if you're unsure about if chemical engineering is the right path for you, still try it out because there's so many different possibilities and different like different fields you could go into. Um, and there's so many different emphases as well. And everyone in the major is like the major small and everyone's really, really close. And you get to know your major really well as well versus like some other majors outside of engineering. They're quite large and you don't get to have the chance to know everyone. All right. Well, thank you so much, Sydney, for bringing this conversation and, and shedding a little more light on chemical engineering, the lives of students inside of chemical engineering from our Mork family department of chemical engineering. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your week, you too. And for everyone listening, you all have a great week as well. And we will see you next week with another episode of Viterbi Voices. Mm -hmm.